You're here because you're either taking gabapentin for your neuropathy or your doctor has recommended it. Is it even FDA approved for neuropathy? Let's get on into it. The plan for the video, what we're gonna be covering here is right off the bat, is it approved for neuropathy? How does it work? What are its side effects? And are there any alternatives? So right off the bat, who am I? Why should you even listen to me? I'm Dr. Prax. I hold a diplomate in neuropathy. I'm also certified as a specialist in functional neurology, and I received my degree in chiropractic medicine in 1996. I wrote a book called Reversing Neuropathy, Making the Impossible Possible, 2018. You can check that out on Amazon. And I love making these videos. I just crossed the 500 video mark. I'm also actively the clinical director here in Charlottesville, Virginia. The clinic name is Reversing Neuropathy. In this clinic, this is all I do, neuropathy. So that's why you should listen to me. I have an amazing team that surrounds me. Here they are, just some of them. We celebrate our wins. This is a recent celebration. We love getting results. With our program, we get an 85 to a 90% result. We get results with our neuropathy program. We're gonna drop a link to the playlist in the description below, but we have over 1,500 people who we've helped, over 100 video testimonials from other people who have actually reversed their neuropathy. Enough about me and my team. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So off the bat, what is neuropathy? It's a Greek word, neuro means nerve, pathy means damage. Really simple, you probably have peripheral neuropathy and that has to do with the peripheral nervous system. Those are the nerves that go into the arms, the hands and the fingers and the ones that go into the legs and the feet. When we have a pathy, we have a damage. So peripheral neuropathy is damage to those nerves. Common symptoms would be tingling, numbness, pain. You can have them separately. You can have them all together. It hurts. It's really uncomfortable. Balance is a thing as well. Many causes, there's over 100. Diabetes, chemotherapy, et cetera, et cetera, are causes. But let's go into gabapentin. So gabapentin neuropathy. First of all, there's, there's over 20 million cases of neuropathy that's diagnosed every single year. Now, gabapentin, is it FDA approved for peripheral neuropathy? The answer in short is yes and no. So most often though, for the type of neuropathy you have, diabetic chemotherapy, it is not FDA approved. That's important for you to know. Doctors have the license to use drugs off label because they find it to work for certain things but it's not, not been approved by the FDA. So only the anticonvulsant Lyrica, Cymbalta, Nucinta, and the topical Capsation are the only drugs approved by the FDA for the treatment of diabetic neuropathy. Gabapentin does not make the list. But you might be thinking, who cares, it works, or what's the big deal, my doctor recommended it. I think it's important to know whether the FDA puts their stamp of approval on it or not. In order for them to do that, they have to have research to indicate that it's helpful and that it actually isn't gonna cause major harm. So what is gabapentin? We don't really know. I mean, we know what it is, but we don't really know the mechanisms of it. But it is believed that it interacts with chemicals in the nervous system, mostly the brain, that influence pain perception and seizure activity. So let's stop right there. Gabapentin is FDA approved for seizures. It's an anti-seizure medication. Doctors have just found that when they prescribe it to their seizure patients, it also seemed to help with certain types of pain, including neuropathic pain. So here's a simplified breakdown of what we know. It has to do with neurotransmitters, particularly this one here called GABA. GABA plays a role in inhibiting nerve signals 
So gabapentin's interaction with it could potentially dampen nerve activity. That's what we think it happens. It actually works at the synapses up here at the brain. It slows the brain down and it, it interacts with GABA, which helps to inhibit pain. What does that mean? To put the damper, to put the brakes on pain. Let's face it, for pain relief, for many of my patients, they report it does help. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna fix the problem, but it may help to dampen your neuropathy symptoms. This is what we also know, reduced excitatory activities. I'm just gonna read this, but by affecting neurotransmitters, gabapentin may help reduce excitatory signals in the nervous system. This could be relevant for pain and seizures. In epilepsy, excessive excitatory signals can contribute to seizures and gabapentin can help dampen those. For pain, we think it's possible that gabapentin reduces the intensity of pain signals traveling along those nerves. So it's not really down at your feet or down at your hands where it's working, it's the perception of pain, meaning it's affecting us up here in the brain. And many of my patients who take it, who can handle the side effects, which we'll cover later, say, yes, it helps, it doesn't make it perfect, but it does seem to help with the pain. I found that it does not actually help with the numbness, the tingling, or other paresthesias, but yes, I have had patients say it does seem to help with the pain. So FDA approval status, the status on that is only approved for seizures and post-herpetic neuralgia, which we could say is a form of neuropathy, but it's only really been approved for seizures and this type of neuralgia. So it's not FDA approved for peripheral neuropathy. My guess, and this is only Dr. Prax here, but my guess, you might be wondering, well, why hasn't the FDA approved it? Because pretty much everybody who comes in here, they're on gabapentin. Doctors, you know, hear patients complaining of numbness, tingling, burning, you have neuropathy, bam, here's the gabapentin. I really think that Pfizer and the generics have done a great job educating uh, or marketing to doctors saying, hey, if, they, if your patients have these symptoms, give them our drug because it can help manage that pain. So I think it's used off-label. It is so widespread usage. Everybody seems to know you have those symptoms. Gabapentin is where it goes. So I think Pfizer and the generics are like, why do we even need to get FDA approval? It's already a great seller. It is and from what I've seen, it's, it's the first go-to is gabapentin, then it's Cousin Lyrica, and then we might hear Cymbalta, but I think it's not FDA approved because they're like, why am I gonna spend all that money on it? It's already a bestseller for neuropathy. Uh, it's also a non-opioid, so that's another reason why I think it gets used so much. Effective in neuropathy. I could only find one study, and it really wasn't even a peer-reviewed study, it was a summary uh, called the Cochrane Review. Uh, it was updated in 2014 to address the efficacy of gabapentin compared with placebo to palliate, which means to help neuropathic pain. What they did in the Cochrane Review is they reviewed 37 small trials. Now this combined more than 5,700 patients, but even the reviewers of the Cochrane Review indicated that high quality evidence was lacking compared to placebo. Gabapentin did pretty well. It came out with a 50% reduction in pain. And again, a lot of my patients do report that it seems to help with their pain. Tingling, numbness, and other paresthesias have not been studied. I haven't really found them to help with what my patients report. Now it is important, like all medications, it's important to know gabapentin itself does have side effects. And I wanna be truthful with you, this doesn't mean that the side effects means that you're going to feel it or that you even have any of these. Maybe you have some of them, maybe you have none, but this is what Pfizer puts on their sheet about what the potential side effects and things to consider. So even at recommended dosages, and by the way, max dose is 600 milligrams three times a day, 1800 milligrams would be the max they would recommend. It can cause neurological adverse events. Dizziness, I hear a lot. It's not on their form, but I hear people saying it makes me feel like a zombie. So it does affect our brain and our thinking. It slows things down. You walk into a room, you're forgetting why you walked in there and just feel like you're on a cloud or kind of feeling yucky. 
and they don't really put that yuckiness feeling on there, but we're going to call it dizziness, sleepiness, euphoria, other psychedelic effects, dependence. They do like to say, oh, it's not addictive, but yeah, it's definitely addictive. If you're on it and you're watching this video and you're thinking, I'm getting off that stuff, I would highly recommend you check with your doctor on that. Some people can effectively just drop it and uh, like a bad habit, go cold turkey and do fine. But others, it can be very, very addictive and very, very bad to just try and cold turkey. I would recommend if you're considering dropping it, do it with your doctor's help on that. Withdrawal symptoms, I've heard them, and you can read some of my people who comment on these videos, but withdrawal symptoms can be gnarly, really, really bad. So get with your doctor and make sure we do that correctly. There is a new warning that I discovered in going over in preparing for this video. There is a new warning and that's a risk of potentially fatal respiratory depression. What that means is it can kill you and it affects your respiratory system, so the lungs. So that's something I learned while preparing for this video. Now there are alternatives and I want you to consider this. I've done videos on almost all of these, not all of them, but let's go through. There's obviously physical therapy. This will help just in getting the muscles moving and get the circulation going. Physical therapists use things like ultrasound and other pain treating modalities that can definitely help. I want you to consider acupuncture. It's been around, what, 5,000, 10,000 years to help with pain. What if that could help? I've heard good things about chiropractic. I no longer do chiropractic care here in the clinic, but obviously I'm biased on that. I love chiropractic care. This is gonna help with pinched nerves, I mean, I think it's a good thing, even acupuncture for, say, diabetic or chemo-induced neuropathy to tune up the nervous system and the flow of energy, but that may not make those neuropathies go away. There's a new therapy. It's this one right here called shock wave therapy. It's pretty cool therapy. I really like it. But what it's doing is sort of sort of a waking up the immune system, bringing the immune system's attention to, uh, in this case, the knee. But if you have it in your, they put this equipment on your feet, it stimulates the stem cell release. So that can actually stimulate a healing in those particular areas. So I really like the idea of shockwave therapy. There's vibration therapy, biofeedback. These are things you wanna look into. Maybe even massage therapy. Here in the clinic, we have these vibration massagers. You can get a vibration plate. I have a video on that. A vibration massager, a video on that as well but stimulating those vibration nerve pathways can actually dampen pain. And some of these things are really cheap. You can get a vibration platform that you put your feet on and just sit on it uh, or put your feet on it for 20 minutes and get relief. Two, $300 for that. A handheld vibration thing where you put it on your hand or your feet. Th those can be for like $30 and I have a video on that as well. But so massage therapy, vibration therapy, I'm a big fan of yoga and meditation, other mind-body techniques, Tai Chi, for example, have been found to be really helpful. There's a gazillion different supplements online. I have videos on that as well, but certainly if you wanna make sure you're in the right range of your B vitamins, B like boy, because B vitamins, if deficient, make it really hard for nerves to grow back in there. We know that certain deficiencies like B12, B6, B1, and other B vitamin deficiencies can cause neuropathy. So usually it's not harmful to just go ahead and just throw the B vitamins at it. We wanna check with our doctor because running high levels of certain Bs, particularly B6, can actually cause neuropathy. And so the very thing you're trying to do can lead to it, make it worse. Supplements though are great. Diet, in the book I talk about uh, anti-inflammatory diets, paleo diet, the keto diet, if you're diabetic, can be game changers right there, game changers. So look at dietary changes as well. Consulting with healthcare professionals. Yeah, we wanna consult with someone who knows neuropathy. We might think off the bat that the neurologist within Western medicine would be the place to go. They can really help us to get a diagnosis. Your primary doc can certainly pull blood labs. We wanna rule out things like vitamin deficiencies. Uh, make sure they put that on the test. Obviously, we wanna rule out diabetes. Pretty simple to do those blood tests. Makes a lot of sense. If you have diabetes, you already know 
It's the carbs and the sugars, okay? So, but work with someone who knows neuropathy. We also need to rule in or rule out other conditions, central neuropathies like MS, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, pinched nerves, fibromyalgia, plantar fasciitis. There's lots of things that can lead to nerve damage. And we want to know if it's plantar fasciitis, which is something that affects the, the fascia underneath our feet, B vitamins aren't aren't really gonna solve that. You gotta fix the plantar fasciitis. So again, understanding what the cause of the situation is, is really gonna help us to figure out the solution, right? Okay, so I really wanna thank you for watching this video. If you did find it helpful, hit the share button. You might also wanna hit the subscribe button. As I said, I have over 500 videos. I'm doing these on a weekly, if not daily basis, just getting content out there to help you out. When you hit the subscribe button, what happens is when I create a new video, you'll be alerted to it and you'll get taken right to the new video to keep you up and on the latest and greatest research and my thought process on that. If you share it, you hit the share button, you put your friend's name or email address in there. Let's help other people who are struggling with neuropathy. There's a little tidbit at the end. Type 2 diabetes, even pre-diabetes is the leading cause of neuropathy chances are you know someone is affected by it, do them a favor and share our channel with them. What's cool about YouTube is that it's free. So share this. Let's help more people get relief. If you are interested in working with us, I'm happy to consult with you. We can do it over Zoom or FaceTime or even a phone call. We prefer Zoom. But if you're unable to visit us in person, yeah, we do comprehensive remote support to people all over the world. We can consult, we can ship the tools that we would recommend for you, get you connected with one of our health coaches. So, 